Lucretia, the most beautiful daughter of the Pope, has been married three times in her life. Whenever the Pope needed to make a profit, he would send his daughter for political marriage. Even though she had a baby to feed, Lucretia felt that she had no dignity or freedom. I am to lie on my back and wait to be ravaged by a beast enough, of your enough, choosing. Enough, this language. But no matter how much Lucretia resisted, it was to no avail. The despotic Rodrigo still put her on a blind date. Lucretia had to fight back in her own way. What do you think? The man or the dog? That's no to the doge's nephew. And yes to the dog. Rodrigo had no choice but to signal for the next person to come in. The second round of suitors came from a wealthy family. However, Lucretia soon ignores her betrothed and falls in love with her betrothed's brother. After learning that Raffaello paints in the garden every day, Lucretia immediately picks up a drawing board and pretends to run into him. The two of them talked about poetry, song and painting, and instantly drew closer to each other. Raffaello, who also fell in love with Lucretia at first sight, couldn't help but ask her if she would marry his brother. He is an honorable man, so yes, sir. I think he'll make a worthy husband. For me. Raffaello, of course, did not want Lucretia to marry his brother, and after confirming Raffaello's feelings, Lucretia began to slowly approach. After one kiss, Lucretia was sure she had found love again, but her profit-minded father would never marry her to the second son, who had no inheritance and no status or power. So her experienced mother began to talk her through it. The mother said that Lucretia, as the daughter of the Pope, could have both brothers at the same time. It is a game of love and lust and marriage. Her mother told her that the key to the game was that she could marry one man and have another at the same time. If she gets bored after a while she can find a new husband. As long as she agrees to the union, her mother's reminder did open Lucretia's mind. So, she secretly invites Raffaello for a late night date. However, the next morning, she publicly agrees to his brother Calvino's proposal of marriage. This certainly confused Raffaello who was sleeping with her last night. But Raffaello was sincere enough to tell his brother Calvino all about his feelings for Lucretia. However, the next morning, Calvino made an unreasonable request to the Pope. The I cannot marry your daughter. Why? Holy Father, I wish to marry your daughter. The Pope did not make excuses, but rejected him. He said that Raffaello was the second son of nobody and had no right to ask for the Pope's daughter's hand in marriage. So Rodrigo cancelled his daughter's engagement in a feat of rage. Lucretia was able to have some peace until her next match arrived. The next most important thing was the baptism of her son. He took his sister's baby and dangled it from the railing of the second floor and ignored the baby's cries, whom wanted to scare his sister and the child. Leave my baby alone. Let go of my child. Juan saw the older brother across the room with a fierce gaze and even threw down the child's clothes as a provocation. At the end of the fast, Lucretia's child was finally baptized. At her request, her older brother Cesare, as the godfather of her child, performed the baptism with the Pope. The crowd was in a joyful mood, but her second brother Juan, with a vicious mind, sarcastically called Lucretia's child a lowly bastard. The real baptism of the child was the moment he hanged Paul the stable boy. Lucretia reminds him not to forget his identity. We are all bastards. You, me, our brothers, we are all bastards. Yes, perhaps. But we are Borgia bastards. Juan thinks that being born into the Borgia family makes him superior. His noble status is not comparable to this little kid's. He then teases Lucretia about throwing the child to death. After driving Juan away, Cesare immediately came to Lucretia's room. And Lucretia now wants Cesare to teach her how to poison. She wants to kill Juan tonight. Even though it would break their father's heart, Cesare has also put up with his father's preference for the misguided Juan. But he was never loved by his father and could not do what he liked. Cesare's freedom is bound by the priesthood that his father, as Pope, has bestowed on him. Lucretia seemed to see Cesare's dilemma as well. No killing then. Hearts may yet be broken, but not yours. At that moment, Lucretia finds their father suddenly appearing behind them. Cesare says that his brother is on his way to destruction. Juan is drinking all day and killing innocent people and making countless enemies. Even Juan will end up burying his entire family with him. However, 
The Pope says that Cesare should love one as a brother. Will love make him a better man? Don't let envy rule your heart. So I am my brother's keeper? Yes. Rodrigo until now thought that Cesare was jealous of Juan's favor, but Rodrigo did not know that Juan was committing atrocities downstairs at this moment. Since Rodrigo was overindulging his second son, Cesare, as the older brother, had to do the right thing, he asked Juan out late at night on the pretext of apologizing. Then he stabbed his younger brother Juan while no one was around. We're Borgias. We never forgive. <laughs> <laughs> After confirming that Juan was completely dead, Cesare pushed him into the river together with a crony. The Pope did not hear from Juan for several days and did not know where he had gone. But fortunately, his daughter gave him good news at that moment. Prince Alfonso had arrived in Rome as the third suitor, and Lucretia fell in love with him at first sight. The second time she met Prince Alfonso, she said yes to the proposal. You may kiss me. On the cheek. The Pope was overjoyed, but he had just left the church when he heard the sad news from the cardinals. She looked at her brother's corpse and instead of crying, she was happy. Her father denounced her for being cold-blooded and merciless. What would you have me say? You know what he did to me? What he took from me? You all do! I have wished him dead a thousand times. And now you want me to mourn him. Knowing that Lucretia hated her second brother, the Pope did not force her. Then he began to criticize Cesare. He accused Cesare of not shedding a single tear for Juan's death. I wept them all out for him long ago. I watched him fail and I wept. You should know you were there. And still, you, you granted him your every favor. The Pope had no idea that his family, which he thought was harmonious, was in such a state of disarray. He was still grieving the loss of his beloved son Juan. He asked Juan's mother if she wanted Juan to die too. She said no, but there were times when she wished Juan had never existed. The Pope decided that Juan had been murdered and insisted on finding the real killer before burying Juan's body. He stayed awake for days and nights at Juan's side, waiting for the results of the investigation. At that moment, Cesare was lying with his sister. Lucretia didn't know the truth, but wanted Cesare to promise her one thing. I would ask you to marry me. As you wish. We shall run away, change our names perhaps. <laughs> to Alfonso. Yes. Yes, I know. Cesare only took the opportunity to say what he really thought, but this time he could not agree to Lucretia's request, because soon he will lose his cardinal's garb. Cesare finds his father and says that he has found Juan's killer. Well then tell us! You truly wish to know? Although he couldn't believe his suspicions, the Pope clearly knew the answer, but he could not accept the result of this fratricidal murder. Cesare also asked his father at this time to relieve him of his duties as a cardinal and handed over the ruby ring, a symbol of his identity. Cesare then quickly prepared Juan's funeral because he wanted to put his sister's engagement ceremony on the agenda. And while the crowd was singing and dancing, the Pope Saturday alone beside Juan's corpse, he slowly got up and picked up his son as if he were still a child and went into the garden alone. He then dug a large hole in the garden with his own hands and placed his son's dead body there. Grant him peace. Then the Pope came into the ballroom covered in dirt and wanted to talk to Cesare alone. He finally realized that his connivance and favoritism had caused the present situation and repented of it. He also finally reveals why he doesn't love Cesare. The Pope thinks that Cesare is very similar to him. If I cannot have your affection, can you at least grant me your forgiveness? I... As he spoke, the Pope suddenly began to twitch, and the squire who was standing by to test the poison for him was bleeding from dice. The Pope also fell to the ground spitting blood. The second season of the Borgias ends here. Who is the person who poisoned the Pope? Will the Pope's life end here? Let's look forward to the third season of the Borgias.